I'm gonna do a quick check to make sure we're recording and awesome, it looks like we are. So once again, thank you for joining us for this really exciting opportunity at Grand Pacifica. Uh, I'm going to be your host for today, Rachel Jensen. Last week, you had a very special guest host, Patrick Kiebert. He is our chief operating officer of ECI Development and lives in Nicaragua, has spent many years there. Um, it's a place that he definitely calls home and he was very excited to share with you the 101 updates and what was going on within the country. So this webinar specifically is going to focus on real estate opportunities. We're going to be talking about casitas, we're going to be talking about home lots and also condos. I think it's one, these are some of my favorite communities within the Grand Pacifica development. Um, and I think that you'll see why as we get through this presentation here. So a quick comment, we are going to use the Q&A section of the control panel to type in questions as they come up during the webinar. So to familiarize yourself with it, why don't you find that Q&A section and type in where it is you are calling in from. Let us know where you are dialing in from. We'd love to read those out loud. And that would also get you familiar with where it is we are going to be using the panel. I see a handful of you on there. I think maybe you're still getting your notebooks and pens um, ready, maybe, maybe some popcorn. We have Mark from California. We have Betsy is also in California in Walnut Creek. James is in Florida. We have Kent in Nicaragua. I see many, many more of you on here. Maybe you're just trying to find out where that Q&A section is. We have Sedina from Lake Arrowhead, California. We have Hugo Awesome from Ontario. We have Felice from North Carolina. Susan from Saudi Arabia. Awesome. Ermgard in Connecticut. Joe is in Pittsburgh. We have Kent in Nicaragua, awesome. So I'm seeing a lot of variety here. It looks like many people are still logging on there. Linda and David from Kentucky. Uh, so just get familiar with where that is. We are going to be using that throughout this presentation here. So to get started, I will be your host for this session this afternoon. Um, and as many of you may or may not know, Nicaragua is actually where I really started my Central American journey. Uh, although Belize is currently home for me, Nicaragua is where I first start out, started out. In 2010, it was my first time in the region. I went when I was in college. I was originally studying biology in school, thought I wanted to be a doctor, and I had this really exciting opportunity to go down to Nicaragua on a medical mission trip. And we had a fantastic few weeks there. Uh, we got to really travel around the, the country quite a bit, got to see different locations. And one of the locations we went to on our day off was none other than Grand Pacifica. So this was back in 2010. The road going out to the property was not yet paved. It is totally paved today, which is really quite neat, but it wasn't paved. We were in a big yellow school bus. There were about 20 of us. We had three or four uh, guides who were with us and we're going down this really muddy road uh, in this school bus. It was definitely rainy season two. So we weren't too sure if we were gonna make it or not, but we ultimately did and it ended up being one of the best days that we had there. It was time where we could just totally relax. We could sit by the pool, get some, uh, some mango margaritas and really just enjoy the ambiance and the setting that we were in. And it was that trip down to Nicaragua in 2010 that really opened my eyes to the region and helped me to realize that I did not want to be in a, in a hospital or in a doctor's office all day. Uh, doing dermatology work. I really wanted to be out in the field. I wanted to be speaking Spanish. I wanted to be doing more. And so ultimately when it came time to decide, senior year of, of college was there, time to decide what it is that I wanted to do, I ultimately decided to apply for the Peace Corps because I knew I did not want to go to medical school at that point. But at that point, I also didn't really know what the options were. So decided to apply for the Peace Corps. I got in to teach English in Panama. That would have been the January following graduation. Uh, so it would have been January 2013. So it left from May to January to really do something. And I had a really great career advisor at the time who was also on the trip with us in 2010. And she said, uh, there's an internship opportunity at the hotel, at the resort, where we went for that one day, go down for three months. I know that you, you enjoyed the country, go down for three months. And then after that, you can prepare, you can come home, prepare to go to the Peace Corps that following January. So I did that. I had this, I got an internship in the Nicaragua at Grand Pacifica. Within two weeks, I was packing my bags down in the country. And um, I don't know how many of your friends and family feel about the fact that you're looking at Nicaragua. I can tell you, I come from uh, the suburbs of, of New York City. It's a bubble up here. And the first thing my parents thought is you're gonna get kidnapped. 
you're, you're going to get sold. It's a very dangerous location. Um, and I was determined to go anyway because I had such a positive experience there when I was there in 2010. So ultimately, I made the move and I really, really enjoyed the experience. I loved living in Nicaragua. The people are amazing. Uh, and I just loved the geography of the country. I don't know. Have, have you ever been? Just type there into the Q&A section if you have been to Nicaragua before. Just write yes or no. I'm interested to see who, uh, who has been. Yes, if you've been to Nicaragua. No, if you haven't been to Nicaragua but it, it was just a phenomenal place. You could hop in a car, go to the Pacific uh, coast, hop on a plane, be in the Corn Islands, which is the Caribbean coast of the country, go to Simoto Canyon, which is like the Grand Canyon of Nicaragua, go up to the coffee growing region, enjoy a cooler climate. So there was quite a bit to do there. Betsy said, yes, James, no, Hugo, yes. Uh, Norman said, yes. Sabrina, not yet. Ergum, yes. Linda, yes. Sandina, no. Michael, no. Susan came two years ago and stayed there. So there's a really good variety of folks I'm seeing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, yes, no. So it looks about, I'd say probably more people yes than no at this point. But if you haven't gone, it is just such a tremendous location. And I know that there's a ton of negative news and press out there. There has been for, for 15, 20 years, even longer than that. Uh, since the 80s, but it really is a place that is worth considering. And because there is this perception, this difference in perception, what you're going to be able to find is that there are really great real estate opportunities there as well. Um, Felice, I see a question here. Is the Ava Mark, the Ava Tiny Home Materials, we're not going to present that in this presentation here, but if you just email us info at ecidevelopment.com, we will get that over to you. Um, we do have some preliminary brochures that we can certainly send over. Mark says, three times at Grand Pacifica. Awesome. So I'm glad to see that a lot of you have had the chance to visit Nicaragua before. So I was there in 2012. Um, I had a really, a really great experience. I was there for about a year and a half. I was living in the capital at that point, Managua. And then I would rent a car on the weekend, go to Grand Pacifica, which at that point was about an hour and 20 minutes from the city. Now with the paved road, totally paved going out to the property. It's about an hour from the center of Managua. So very, very easy to get there. And just a lot, a lot to do, a lot to experience in the country. And I know Patrick talked a lot last week about what you could do when you get there, all of the different activities in the country, but it is certainly a place worth exploring. So as many of you know, our parent company is ECI Development. ECI Development is a regional real estate developer. We've been working in the region for over 20 years at this point. Our first acquisition in the, in the region was in Belize in 1998. And then a few years later, we ended up purchasing this wonderful tract of land in Nicaragua, which is now known as Grand Pacifica. So this is really going to be our focus today, specifically a few communities within uh, Grand Pacifica. And if you have any questions about any of the other developments or any of the other projects that we're working on, we are more than happy to get, get that information over to you. So I hope you're all familiar with where Nicaragua is located here, but we are located in Central America. Uh, we, we have Honduras to the north and then Costa Rica down to the south. And I would also recommend if anybody is going down, maybe play, if you can plan to spend a little bit of time down there, you can always take the bus down south to San Juan del Sur. You can even take the bus over uh, to Costa Rica. I've done that a couple of times as well. And it's easy enough to, to do so. I know that hopefully as it gets a little bit easier to travel, uh, you, you can certainly do that. So why Nicaragua? These are some top 10 reasons why a lot of folks are considering either living in Nicaragua or owning real estate there or simply just going down for a vacation. Uh, this was covered in depth last week with Patrick on his 101 presentation, but a couple of points that I do want to highlight here is uh, the safety of the country. I know that that's something that is brought up quite a bit. Patrick did a fantastic job at covering uh, the safety of this country and the perception. Like we said, there's this big perception issue with the country and a lot of that is due to the history. It's due to the media um, really, really trying to scare people, I think. But Patrick goes through a lot of great resources to show you that. Um, in addition to that, we're finding a lot of people are coming to this country because it's uh, extremely affordable. Um, and for example, when I was living in Managua, I was living in a good part of the city. I had a, a one bedroom, one bath. It was probably about 750, 800 square feet. I had a little courtyard in the middle, full kitchen, furnished. I had a, a housekeeper that came regularly, would change the linens, would clean, and it was about $350 a month. Um, and then I had to pay utilities on top of that. So it came out to about 
$425, $450 a month. So it was very, very affordable. It still is very affordable today. Uh, and especially when it's compared to Costa Rica, Costa Rica and Nicaragua have a very similar geography. And when you look at the two, because Costa Rica has been so popular in the tourism industry for a long time, you tend to find that would be more expensive, but Nicaragua uh, really is quite affordable at this point, and I would certainly recommend it. And then of course, the big part that we're gonna talk about today is the inexpensive real estate, especially when you compare it, like I said, to Costa Rica. Even if you're comparing it to places in the States, if you're thinking about a Pacific front sort of opportunity, I know California comes to mind for a lot of people because it is Pacific. It has a very, it's very, very similar in many ways, um, but the water is a little bit warmer. It's about 82 degrees year round. If you would like a copy of the webinar that Patrick covered last week, just email us info at ecidevelopment.com We'll send that over to you. If you were on the webinar last week or you registered for it, you probably have a copy of it, but we'd be happy to send that to you again uh, if you would like to see it. So I like to show this chart in the presentations that I'm doing when we're talking about real estate. This is the real estate investment curve. And what this curve really shows us is, is markets in the region that are at this top end of the curve, when you're looking here at the top, like Pacific Costa Rica, that are producing a cash flow. At the bottom part of the curve, you're looking at places that are not necessarily uh, producing a large cash flow, but they have high levels of appreciation. Now, to take, it, to take it one step back, when investors are looking at investment property, and this is specifically for investment property, you're probably looking for one of two things. You're looking for that cash flow, but you're also looking for appreciation, maybe one or the other, but I think in both, in case, many cases, most, most of us want both. We want that cash flow. We want the appreciation, but it comes with pros and cons. If you want that mature, you want that cash flow, you have to look in a mature market. If there's cash flow, that means there are tourists coming. And when you look at the top part of the curve, there's Pacific Costa Rica. Many of us have heard about Pacific Costa Rica. Maybe we've been there. Maybe you know people who have been there. But when you're looking at real estate opportunities that are on the Pacific, Guanacaste, in the Guanacaste region there, you're going to find that they're three, four, five times the price of what they are in Nicaragua. But Pacific Costa Rica has been around in the tourism market for two, three decades at this point. Now, as you continue down the curve, and going back to Costa Rica for one second, what you're going to find is there's not much room for appreciation there because it really has plateaued. It's gotten to the point where a lot of people are going there. There's a lot of popularity. It's expensive. It's getting more expensive. But again, if you want that cash flow, it's there. Now, as you go down to the bottom part of the curve, you see Nicaragua down there at the bottom. Nicaragua really hasn't hit that tourism, the, the number of tourists, that record tourism that Pacific Costa Rica has. Uh, you know, it has had this, this kind of interesting reputation over the years, um, but we found that people who are looking in Nicaragua are really setting themselves up for the future. They are looking to hold on to their property for 5, 10, 15 years, maybe sell it, maybe not sell it, maybe keep it in the family, but they're looking for great value at this point. And as places become more popular, getting that great value is always harder and harder to find. So Nicaragua, it's slowly making its way up here. Uh, I think that for, if we have any surfers on the line, surfers really don't care what's going on in the region. They just want to make sure there are good surf waves. Uh, we tend to have a lot of surfers who are coming to Nicaragua. We have one of the best surf breaks right there in front of the property. I'm going to show you a video of it in a minute. But uh, we are seeing that really we're getting surfers. We're getting the adventure travelers. We're getting people who want to get the most out of their money, what they want the best bang for the buck. They're also the people who are looking at opportunities. They're the people who think ahead, people who are looking for those appreciation factors. So needless to say, if you are looking for an investment property and you are looking for cash flow, I would say Nicaragua is good for that as well because we do have the stream of tourists. Um, obviously, COVID has kind of skewed things a little bit, but uh, before COVID and even before 2018, um, there, is just, there was just a tremendous amount of growth in the country. And I do assume that at some point that will resume. So discover Nicaragua. I mean, and discover Grand Pacifica more specifically. So Grand Pacific, it's, it's this amazing piece of land. And if you have not had the chance to go there when you're able to travel, hop on a plane and visit Nicaragua, it is just simply 
breathtaking. The pictures here at the bottom part of the screen are pictures that I took right out of our group chat with our Grand Pacifica residents. They've taken phenomenal pictures and they're probably taking from their phones, cameras, I don't know, but they just come out phenomenal every single time. Really incredible sunset views, but it's a large piece of property. It's about 2,500 acres. Now within Grand Pacifica, we have different neighborhoods and different neighborhoods for different people. We understand not everybody is looking for the same thing when they're looking at ownership of real estate. What's really great about Grand Pacifica is that it is the closest beachfront community to Managua. Now, previously, the 11 kilometers from the primary road to the gate were not paved. I am so happy to tell you that it is fully paved at this point. Uh, our marketing team did have plans to increase price a little bit because it does, the property becomes more accessible. More people are going to be going there. Um, obviously, with everything going on with COVID, we decided to halt that, which is a great benefit to you. But for our travelers or visitors or owners, it is very, very smooth to go from the capital right there to the Grand Pacifica Gate. We do have golf there on site, uh, as well as a lot of other amenities, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. And we have community uh, there right now. We do have uh, expats who are living full-time on site. That is their primary residence. They're there right now. Uh, we do have snowbirds who come. They wanna enjoy the, uh, the winters in Nicaragua, which are just unbelievably beautiful. And then in addition to that, we get the visitors. We get the day visitors. We also get the tourists who are in town for a little bit. And even a lot of visitors from Managua, local visitors, Nicaraguans who are coming to just get away for a little bit of R&R. &R. So if you can see here on the map, we are located right where this star is. Uh, it's about an hour to go from Managua to the Grand Pacifica property on fully paved road. All right, so what is there in the region? The fishing is phenomenal. It's surfing, if you're a surfer or you know somebody who is, this is definitely a place that you want to try, even if you're not a surfer. So I know Grand Pacific has one of the best surf breaks in the region for the experienced surfers it's called the Meat Grinders. We'll see a, a video of it in a couple of minutes here. But even if you're not necessarily a surfer and you want to try down the beach at Asachio, we do have beginner waves there too. It's where I, I attended to go surfing once. Um, I don't know if I'll do it again, but there are our beginner waves there for anybody who likes to try new things. Uh, snorkeling, you'll find great snorkeling on the Caribbean side over by the Corn Islands and diving uh, over there as well, just sim simply breathtaking. And what we find in Nicaragua is we tend to get a lot of the adventure travelers, people who like being outside, who like doing things. Uh, there are a lot of paths and trails and nature walks for people, dirt biking, which is pretty cool, um, hiking and exploring generally, whitewater rafting, and there's a lot more. There's horseback riding there on site. There's a spa services on site as well. Um, like we talked about golf, there's, there's just a tremendous amount to do. And what you find is that, especially if you're living there and you have a car, it's just easy to, to hop out and do these sort of activities. Go to Leon for a little bit, uh, go to Managua, go to uh, uh, Granada, some of these other, other popular cities. On site, we just mentioned a couple of these, but we do have the golfing, surfing, boating, fishing, biking, hiking, uh, horseback riding, all of that right there at your fingertips. So here's just an overall map of Grand Pacifica. This is just a portion of it. Uh, like I said a couple of minutes ago, it's a huge piece of property. As you can see, there are 2,500 acres. Um, not all of this is developed at this point. I'd say probably about 10% of the 2,500 acres is developed, maybe a little bit more than that at this point. And this is a project that ECI uh, really has a 20, 25 year timeline on. It's not something that's going to finish tomorrow. It's not something that's going to finish in 10 years from now. It is a longer timeline, but that is our goal as a company is as we continue to go is to continue building these neighborhoods, continue building. I mean, this is, a, this is a community. This is a village. This is a very unique piece of property there in the country because it is so large and because we cater to so many different groups. But like we said, neighborhoods for everybody. And I do want to point out the Ava neighborhood because I know that was mentioned last week, but it wasn't on the on the site map. If you can follow my cursor, it's over here on the left-hand side. Over This is the Ossetio Beach. This is just where you have an amazing beach and I'll show you a video of it in a couple of minutes, but it is just straight sand and this is where you have the beginner waves for surfing and then as you crawl up the property line there the waves get a little bit more uh, a little bit more intense but um, we're going to just talk about a couple of these neighborhoods here and then next week we're going to do a deep dive into the other ones. So I wanted to show you this quick surfing video. This is right in front of the property uh, over by the um, the Las Perlas and Playa Pacifica, which are two of the communities that we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to play the video and there may be a point or two that I pause the video and then talk about where it is that we are um, in reference to. 
So you can see, I don't, again, I don't know if we have any surfers. If you do surf, just say yes in the, the box. I'd be interested uh, in hearing from you. I know surfers aren't too happy when I talk about surfing, but I think that you will be if you haven't had the chance to visit yet. So I'm gonna pause right here. For, oh, I went a little bit too quickly there. All right, let's try that again. Okay, right over here. So what we're looking at is the Las Perlas Building 1. Uh, this is the building that is already there. It was constructed about 13, 14 years ago. And this is the only beachfront condo building at this point. It's about 22, 23 condos overlooking the water. And during high season, when we and peak season, especially during the Easter and Christmas and New Year's, it is totally booked. Weddings, this, this building gets totally booked out, even long weekends, uh, because people want to be there by the beach. They want to be over by the pool, which if you can follow my cursor is right there, a palapa, a snack shack. Um, and then if you can follow my cursor one more time, Right over here, you see a gray building that is currently under construction. That is Las Perlas Oceanfront Village. That is the opportunity that we're going to talk about today. It is a condo building currently under construction. A few more months of construction to go before we open up uh, just in time for high season of this year. So as you can see, this is just a smidge, a little piece of the property. Um, but I also do want to mention one other piece, if you can follow my cursor, is over here on the left-hand side. This is where Playa Pacifica is. That's a joint venture that we're going to talk about during this presentation as well. It's a two-bedroom condo opportunity, beachfront within close proximity to Las Perlas Oceanfront Village, where there is a restaurant there on site, Sea Salt. Uh, and then all around here, you also have the golf course. So this is just a little overview of the property, but three and a half miles of beachfront. That's what Grand Pacifica has, three and a half miles of beachfront. So you just have a tremendous amount of space, a lot of a lot of a lot of beach, a lot of sand uh, to go surfing or to go swimming, depending on what you want. I'm going to pause it also one more time. So right over here, this is this is also the property. Uh, you go around this little nook right over here, and Asachio is on the other side. So as you can see, there's just a lot of beachfront land available, um, and we're going to talk about what some of those opportunities look like for you. So the three, the three opportunities we're gonna talk about, number one is Casita Village. And if you follow the arrow right up here, it's where that orange community is. And this is number three in the blue, but number one is what we're gonna talk about. Then the second opportunity we're gonna talk about is the Playa Pacifica condos. So this is where we talked about uh, the joint venture with Kent. And over here, number three is Las Perlas Oceanfront condos. And that's the building that's currently under construction, that gray building that I pointed out that is right in front of the meat grinders waves. So uh, as you can see, there are a lot of different opportunities here. We're gonna go through those through the course of the next couple of weeks. But what we wanted to do was highlight these three opportunities because these are, are definitely um, at least Casita Village and Las Perlas are entry level pricing and uh, there are some great opportunities now and Playa Pacifica as well. If you're looking for that beachfront condo, that is a really great option, especially with the two bedrooms there. So the first village, the first community we're gonna talk about is Casita Village. And these are smaller homes. Casita is little house, Casa and then Ita little house. Small homes, same great amenities. So these are not tiny homes. Tiny homes are typically 300 to 400 square feet. These are larger, these are about 900 to about 13, 1400 square feet. So Casita Village uh, is comprised of about 94 home lots, as you'll see there. Some of them do have homes existing. Uh, some owners rent their homes out long term. Some do it nightly. Some come and go as they please. Others will live there at some point. You have really ultimate flexibility when it comes down to it. Now, there are two different home sites. There is the home site that's on the golf course lot, and then the, the home site that's in the green area. That's where the price variation is. The home site alone is about 40000 uh, to about 50,000, depending on your location within this property here. Now, what a lot of people like about Casita Village is it's smaller but efficient homes. So like we said, not as tiny as the tiny homes. It gives you that space there. If you're looking to come down for a longer period of time, it is certainly a place where many people are doing that. One of the most popular models uh, that we're seeing built on this property is San Martin. We're gonna go through what that floor plan looks like. It's about a thousand square feet, a little bit less than that, a, a two bedroom, two bathroom. Uh, a little bit more about Casita Village. It's a short about 10 minute walk to the beach. You're able to get there on paved sidewalks. And here within the Casita Village area, you have this kind of intimate village feel where you have the sidewalks, you have landscaping, you have greenery, you have the golf course around. It's a really pretty tropical uh, environment. And then, of course, the fun stuff there, it's fully serviced with the underground electricity, the high-speed internet. We do have fiber optics throughout Grand Pacifica, 
and then other infrastructure as well. Property owner fees, a very affordable $2.62 per square meter. And we'll break that down with, that translates to for some of the lots here. So the one, uh, the most popular models that we're seeing is the San Martin model. It's about a thousand square feet, a little bit less than that, two bedroom, two bath, the washer dryer, it has the front porch. And this has really encompassed a lot of what people are looking for. They don't necessarily need a ton of space, but they have exactly what they, they need within this less than thousand square foot space. Uh, there's also a storage area where if you want to store some of your items or your personal items and then rent out your home, you're able to do that as well. Um, something else that I do want to mention is it has the high ceiling, so you do get that feel of it being a little bit bigger than it is, which I know a lot of folks like when they are building. And it is uh, one story, one floor, so very convenient, very livable. Um, Casita Village, we'll be happy to send you over more pictures, but as you can see here, they're cute homes. Uh, they're in a village sort of concept. You do have that side, those sidewalks, as you can see, you have the landscaping throughout. It's a cute neighborhood. It's a very cute neighborhood of very efficient and practical size homes. So one of the specials I did want to talk about, and I do have a, th a few of these throughout the presentations for each of the properties. So write them down. I think I have a recap at the end, but write them down anyway, because if anything is of interest to you, what we can do is talk about it, um, get together one-on-one, -on -one, talk about what it looks like, but we do want to make sure that you recognize the specials because it's our way of saying thank you for joining us. So we have a special on lot B22 that may not sound like much, but this is a golf course facing lot. And you have one or two, uh, one of two options here is one, you can own the lot and you can at this point not do anything with it, hold on to it for a little bit of time. Or if you want to build a house, uh, you can certainly do that as well. So we have a couple of different prices here, but what you'll see is this lot typically, uh, traditionally it's about $49,000. That's because it is on the golf course. So you do get that golf course premium there, but we are offering it for $17,000 off. So now it's 32,000. Now, usually uh, if we are doing some sort of developer financing, there's an interest rate to the financing package, but because of everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, we're, we're trying to make it as easy for folks as possible because we understand a lot of people are looking for options. You're looking for plan Bs. You want to get started somehow, but it's not always easy to get started if they're high interest rates or just doesn't make it as feasible. So what we are, what we have agreed to is $5,000 down and then over a 72 month term, there'd be 0% interest. So it comes out to about $375 a month. And then there's a property owner fee and property tax. We can break that down and get a little bit more specific if you are interested in acquiring this lot. Uh, and if at some point you do want to add the San Martin home, you're able to do that for about $100,000. Doesn't have to just be the San Martin. There are about five or six different floor plans uh, that you can choose from. If you want to customize anything, you're able to do that as well. But some folks just like to keep it easy, like to keep it simple um, and just, just choose this there. But that's totally up to you. So this one is $17,000 off. Uh, like I said, normally $49,000. We're doing it for $32,000 for the, the webinar. And if you would like any information as we're going through the session here, just look at the bottom part of the screen. I think on most of the slides, we're able to get that on there, but just email us info at ecidevelopment.com. And then where you see in the quotes, that's what you just want to put in the subject line. So if you would like more information about the casitas, just write casita in subject line, send it off as you're listening and our team will be in touch to go through the details with you. Um, with that being said, so it's the one lot, it's uh, E25 here, 17,000 savings, 5,000 down, and you can finance, you don't have to finance if you don't want to, but that option is there. The one thing I also wanted to mention is I know a lot of people are looking for residency options right now. But we do have that TEAK program in Panama, the TEAK program here uh, in Nicaragua as well at Grand Pacifica. Um, and what people are looking for is a way to invest in the country for the investor residency. The investor residency is $30,000. You invest $30,000 into the country. And then from there, you can apply for your investor residency. It's about $1,000, a little bit less than that per person. And so this, this ownership of the Casita Village lot does qualify you for residency. So this is probably one of the most affordable ways to get the residency other than the TEAK. Um, but it's just a way to get there close to the 30,000, you're at 32,000, and then from there, uh, you're finance or not finance. Again, just send us an email, info at ecidevelopment.com for the details. All right, so we're going to move on to the second community over here, and the second community is a joint venture that we're working on with Kent Payne. Uh, you may have heard of Ken Payne before. He it was in the role that I am now in, I think, what, about 15 years ago, maybe even longer than that, Kent started 
I think longer than that, Ken started with ECI development. He's been living at Grand Pacifica. And Kent really saw a unique opportunity to offer luxury condominiums at Grand Pacifica. And, you know, our Las Perlas oceanfront condos, as you'll see in renderings, they're nice. Um, they're, they're finished very nicely, but they're, they're not necessarily that luxury element. And Kent has done a really great job at bringing this luxury element to Playa Pacifica. And as you can see, uh, where we have number two, the second one here, it is beachfront. It is just a a stone throw away from Las Perlas Oceanfront, about five minute walk, maybe a little bit more, seven minute walk to get from one to the other, um, but very, very close proximity there. So uh, Kent has given me a few slides here to talk about uh, Playa Pacifica. If you would like the details for these beachfront villas, just message us at Playa, P-L-A-Y-A, info at ecidevelopment.com, and we'll be sure to get these to you. So this picture that you see on the left, this is a real picture. Uh, the Villa One is complete at this point. It is made, it's a fourplex made up of four, two bedrooms. So if you're down there in Nicaragua or you have the chance to go, you are able to walk through and see what a, what a fantastic job that he's done. So these two, two bed, two bath going for 389,000 plus closing costs. Um, and as you can see, when you're looking at the interior space, he's done a really nice job. Uh, he's brought in sweet, I know Swedish appliances um, and really brought in tiles. Every, a lot of the things you'll see in the home are custom, special LED lighting as well. So you're gonna not be able to find much like this, especially in Nicaragua, but uh, at Grand Pacific, I can't, you, re you really have outdone yourself here. So there are a handful of, of upgraded luxury finishes, finishes in each of the villas. Uh, these are standard within them, but I do wanna quickly uh, read those out to you. Is Playa Pacifica, as you saw there on the map, is located in a really prime location. It is just steps away from the beach uh, very, very closely. And what's really nice is that if you decide that you want to become an owner at Playa Pacifica, um, as you become an owner first, you get the best views, you get the best houses, the best villa, you get the best location within the property. So right there in front of the beach. You have that panoramic view 180 degrees from north to south, as we saw in that surfing video a little bit ago, you do have those beautiful views of the property. In addition to that, uh, knowing who you're working with is always important, especially when it comes to building. We do have a U.S. trained builder, and we do have those exclusive products, as mentioned before, for the lighting cabinets and appliances. Uh, something that I do want to mention is that uh, th this is also built to seismic standards. Um, in various parts of the world, you have various natural disasters and hur uh, not hurricanes, it's Belize, and earthquakes is what you can tend to find in Nicaragua, but the reality is you build to those standards. And we do have that at Playa Pacifica and the Grand Pacifica properties. Uh, in addition to that, there is a professional management company if you are looking to rent out your condo, let's say you don't want to live in your villa full time, you want to put in the rental program, you're able to do that. And this really neat piece, when Kent and I were talking about it before, I thought it was just a really awesome feature, is that the villa, yes, of course, is air conditioned, but it has the five years man manufacturer warranty. Uh, so you have peace of mind as well when it comes to appliances. And then in addition to that, there's a lot of green space that uh, we're planning to do at Playa Pacifica security systems. If you're looking for that, you're able to implement those really high quality vinyl windows and doors uh, and then the, the streaming television and high speed internet but i do want to i did want to highlight these because again this is a really luxury product uh, kent has done a really great job at crafting these to where you feel like you're just in a really luxury location and you're at grand pacifica you have you have the the, the beach in front of you the waves breaking the sunset right there it really is a unique opportunity so the, the, the property consists of 15 buildings in total, and it'll have four villas per building. So it's a fourplex. All of them have the direct oceanfront views from the balcony, but the location of the specific uh, opportunity that we're talking about, if you decide to become an owner, is you get the best location. You'll be right there in front of the beach. Uh, we talked a little bit about this before. If you want to get the details of the breakdown of the HOA or any expenses, just message us here at info at ecidevelopment.com, and Kent will uh, provide you with with those details. But here you can see a breakdown. I think that this is just a genius model, uh, Kent, of, of what you ended up doing here because you can really break this down to while it is a two bed, two bath, you can even break it down to be a three bed, one bath, or it can be four bed. I mean, you could have people coming in and renting out this entire location if they're with a bigger group. So you really did a great job at designing the floor plans for these villas here. But you can see, I um, mean, they, they have everything there that they really need about 17,000 square feet. So a really nice bit of space. 
And in addition to the interior space, you do have the exterior space as well, 120 square feet of balcony space. And that's really important, especially when you are in a, in a, in a tropical location, not Caribbean, sorry, that's Belize, but when you're in a tropical location, uh, such as Nicaragua, you do, um, you do wanna have that outdoor living space. So Kent has given us a really great special for the webinar here. Um, it's a savings of $45,000. So normally it's a 30, uh, 389,000, but now it's 344,000 plus closing costs, uh, which I think is just a steal, especially for everything that he's offering. Kent can provide you with an inventory of what you can expect when you're looking at the property uh, and in the villas specifically to see those, those really fine finishes. But Ken, this was great. Thank you so much for offering this today for the two bed, two bath, 1,700 square feet, uh, $45,000 savings. And again, Playa, just email us there, Playa, and we'll be able to get you those details. All right, so we're gonna move on to Las Perlas. This is the third opportunity uh, here at Grand Pacifica that we're gonna talk about, and these are condos. And we're gonna go to our map here just to realign us. So uh, look at the last bubble, the last circle over here. This is where Las Perlas Oceanfront Condos is. And at this point, we do have one building that's operating. That's the one that I mentioned to you a little bit of time ago, 23, 20, uh, 22, 23 condos. Uh, it's been operating for about 13, 14 years at this point. And that is the building that tends to see a lot of traffic when it comes to rentals because people want to be looking at the beach when they wake up in the morning. They wanna be looking at the beach when they go to bed at night. They wanna be sitting up there at happy hour with their cocktails enjoying the amazing sunsets. And so what we really identified was that we had a huge opportunity to build more beachfront condominiums. And uh, what we're gonna be talking about is one condo left in the building that's currently under construction. Um, I think it's a, a real steal and I'll talk about it in just a couple of moments here. But the building that's currently up and operating and existing, if you go to the left hand side of the screen, it's right over here if you can follow my cursor. And then in addition at this point, we already have a restaurant on site. There's a little, a little shop there too in the check-in if you forget anything and you need to pick up anything. Uh, there's a pool. In addition to that, there are lounge chairs. There's a little uh, snack shack. There's a palapa. If you want a massage, you can get a massage out there too under that little massage, massage palapa. Uh, and then in addition, so right out here, right in front of Las Perlas is where we have that meat grinders wave. And this is an incredible wave for anybody who's a surfer. I told you, I only went surfing once, so I would not dare touch this wave. Um, but it is phenomenal. It is one of the best in the region. We have had quite a bit of surfers coming specifically to Grand Pacifica to surf this wave. Now, the building that we're going to be talking about is this one right here. This is the first of about 10 in total that we're going to be adding to this community. And this is, again, not necessarily a build that's going to happen this whole build out of Las Perlas Village is not gonna happen in the next year or two. This is a four, five, six year project as we continue to, to gain interest, get more people coming to the property and see the need for these rental condos. Now, you don't have to um, necessarily rent them out if you don't want. I know we've have a couple of owners in this building here, building one who are not planning to rent theirs out. They wanna just come and go as they please. Um, but there are others who are looking at this primarily from the rental perspective. We will have here a pool and eventually we'll be building another restaurant, a snack shack, conference area, meeting spaces at Las Perlas Oceanfront as well. So the one condo that is remaining at this building that is currently under construction is this corner unit right over here. Uh, it's the purple one at the bottom part, bottom right part of the building. I, I personally think it's the one of the best ones there in the building. Uh, and it just became available because the person who originally had the deposit for it was just not able to proceed. So it was one of the first ones that got reserved when we released the floor plans, uh, but now it's the only one remaining at this point. And, and to me, I think one of the neat, fe two of the neat features are, uh, are the, is the wraparound terrace, which you can see over here. So you have a lot of outdoor space. And we were talking before about the importance of outdoor space in a tropical location like this. In addition to that, it's located on the first floor. So you're able to just walk right up, right off of your porch here uh, and then come sit down in the seats and watch the sunset or, or really just make it easy breezy. You don't have to deal with elevators. You don't have to deal with stairs. You're able to just walk right out, be at the pool, be in the lounge chairs, whatever, whatever it is you're, you're looking to do at Grand Pacifica. So here are some interior renderings of the condo. Uh, this is a Costa Dorada model. It's 668 square feet, including the exterior uh, balcony space or the, the porch space there. Uh, this is model number 212. So if you are interested in learning more about it, please ask us. 
We're happy to get the information over to you. The asking price is about $170,000 plus closing and furniture. Now, when you think about this opportunity relative to what you'd be paying in Costa Rica or relative to what would be paying in California, it really is a steal. This is probably two, three times um, less expensive than what you'd be finding in Costa Rica. And I don't even want to begin to imagine what it would be uh, in, in California. But you're looking at the same beach, you're looking at the Pacific waves, just like I said before, a little bit warmer than what you're finding in California. Um, and then if you are looking to finance, there is 50% financing available, five, zero percent, and we can certainly give you those details. But we, again, we understand everything that's going on right now, so we would like to offer $30,000 off of this last condo in Las Perlas Oceanfront Village. Uh, it is $139,900 when you include the closing costs and the furniture it comes out to under $155,000. And this building is under construction, like we mentioned. You saw the gray building there in the drone footage from a little bit of time ago, and it's the last suite in the building. So again, if you're interested, do let us know. Send us a message in the subject line for this one. It would be LPOV212, LPOV212, and we will certainly get those details to you. Uh, if you are looking at this property from a rental perspective, we did put together a performa for you. Um, I'm happy to send it over. Obviously, uh, there's no guarantee when it comes to rental income, but of course, it's important to see what potential sort of looks like. And so we're happy to, to send this over to you. But at the end of the day, the net projections look to be about 8.6%. Net, that's after the expenses from uh, the gross, after the fees are paid. Um, and what I do want to mention, this is really something that I want to highlight when you're looking at any property internationally or any sort of rental property, always identify what fees are taking out from the gross expenses. I've gone on a lot of property tours before where they just fail to mention this rental acquisition fee. And maybe they don't have it named like that, but they just don't even talk about it. And I do want to mention it because for anybody who is who is looking at rental property your your property manager is acquiring the renter from somewhere they're acquiring the renter from somewhere and maybe it's you maybe you're sending over a referral but if they are the professionals they have the the rental property on expedia and booking.com and airbnb and all of these different otas or online travel agencies uh, i know expedia booking.com they can charge as much as 15 percent from the gross so if someone tells you it's, it's a 70 30 split or it's this this just ask what is coming out from the gross first because that's not always talked about so with that being said your annual expenses that you can expect from the gross is this rental acquisition fee um, as you see there, we, we estimate it to be up to 15%, uh, which again would go to the Expedia, go to the booking.com. You could even be the referral agent. We have a really extensive uh, referral program where you get a code, you get landing pages. And if you bring any of the renters to not just your property, but any of the properties, you would be the one receiving that 15%. Um, and then from there, that's what we call the adjusted gross. And then we have that 70-30 split. You get 30%, thir you get 70% rather, you get the 70%. The and then 30% comes over to the management team. Um, because these condos are expected to be um, in, under the, one of the investor laws, the foreign investor laws for the first 10 years, you don't have any income tax and you also don't have any property tax on your real estate there. Uh, but again, if you wanna go through these details, let us know. We can have one of our property consultants contact you, go through this and uh, have it really be a little bit more specific to your situation. There, at this point, there are no owner usage restrictions. So if you're planning to come down for a period of time, let us know. We will book that for you and you'll be able to come. I know we have owners who want to come down. This happened, this happens really true in any of our locations, our wonderful locations that we're working in, is sometimes owners want to come down for high season. High season in uh, the countries that we work in, specifically within Central America, Belize, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, um, and Panama, is that typically when it's winter up north, is when you get a lot of the vacationers. That's considered high season. So November to about May is considered high season in a lot of these locations because people are escaping the north, coming down to the tropical, uh, the tropical weather to experience the warmth. Now, if you're looking to come at that point, really don't expect that you're gonna do too well from the rental perspective. I think June, July is actually the best time for surfing. So you will get some rental, expect to get some rental income from there as well. But if you're really, you're really getting a bulk of your income during that high season, during that, that winter season. So just understand that as you're looking at numbers, you're crunching numbers, if you're planning to spend you know, December, January, February in your condo, you're, you're not going to be doing as well um, from the rental income.
now. For those of you who are looking for something right now, uh, I know that we're, we're opening our property again in Nicaragua uh, August 1st. And I've just seen a tremendous amount of rental increase coming in from, from people in Nicaragua. We get a lot of people from Managua who are looking for rentals. They want to come out for Friday to Sunday, Thursday to Monday, whatever the case may be, especially coming out during holidays. They celebrate birthdays and Father's Day and all of these celebrations at Grand Pacifica because it's just simply so easy to get to. So if you're looking for something now, uh, we do have a condo in the first building that uh, was constructed about 13, 14 years ago. It's in really great shape. Um, it's a Riva studio is how we refer to it, or it's actually a one bedroom, but uh, it's a true true one bedroom. Um, the, the, the bedroom does have a door, so it is a true one bedroom, about 506 square feet. And like with the other uh, building that's currently under construction, this one is first floor, so you can walk directly out to the ocean. If you would like more information about this resale, let us know, Rivas in the subject line, info at ecidevelopment.com. Uh, and we did get a webinar special from the fellow who's selling his condo here, $10,000 off. Uh, he did tell me that he has two real estate agents who are walking through the property with some potential buyers. What we're finding um, is that I mean, sales have definitely slowed down in Nicaragua. I think in a lot of places um, they've slowed down, but what we found is a lot of people are looking for that plan B. They're looking for an alternative place to go. They want to be able to go down to Nicaragua if they want, or this, this other location that may not necessarily be their home location. People are also looking to get money out of banks. That's one of uh, the big reasons we've been seeing as many sales as we have, especially in Nicaragua from Nicaraguans. Uh, wanting to get money out of banks and put it in property, put it in land, um, just bank it somewhere other than, than a bank. And I think many people on this session probably feel the same way, um, but it gives, you, it gives you options. So here are just a couple more photos from Grand Pacifica. I pulled these again from our Grand Pacifica owners group on WhatsApp. So I apologize if they're not the best quality there, but they're just killer sunsets right from the property and when you're at the pool when you're at las perlas and you just look directly into the distance you see the sun setting like this in just such rich colors and it really is probably one of the most peaceful places uh, on earth that at least i have been and what you'll find is a great sense of community there we do have the visitors who are coming uh, the day visitors and the overnight visitors and the long-term renters but we also have expats who live there on site full time that's their home that's their primary residence so you really will be included in this, this great group, this great community of, of like-minded people who, who found value at, in Nicaragua. They found home at Grand Pacifica and it's a place that they call home today. So uh, Patrick did offer this, oh my, I apologize. <laughs> I spelled development wrong there. Um, don't spell it like that, spell how development actually is, but email us if you'd like a copy of the Nicaragua handbook, ECI development, D-E-V-E-L-O-P-M-E-N-T. That'll get you the handbook. I think you have our contact information anyway at this point, but we will get that over to you. And just as a recap of everything that we talked about, I know there's a lot of numbers and a lot of information. So I did my best here to break it down so that it's easy enough to follow through. Um, if you would like any details on anything that you see here, do let us know. Uh, this is, I think, a really great time for people who do have the ability to purchase. We are uh, pretty flexible when it comes to the financing. So if you wanted to finance, do let us know that as well. But you're able to pick up a lot, hold on to it, uh, at least get it now while it's there, while we have these opportunities, while we have these specials going on. Uh, because you probably don't hear about us having specials all that often. Uh, but we do understand the reality of, of the world today and want to be able to offer you a place to come to, a place to feel safe, a place where, where we'll welcome you with arms wide open. So that's the end of this formal presentation. I am going to let you know that we do have a webinar coming up next week as well. We're going to be talking about the larger estate neighborhoods, estate lots, San Diego Viejo, and then Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is where we have larger lots, anywhere from half an acre to an acre and a half. Um, but we'll go through that next week. Let us know if you like an invitation. You'll probably get an email too, but we are going to be doing these on a weekly basis so that you are up to date. So with that, we are going to open the floor to Q&A. Let me check the time here. Okay, good. We have a little bit of time. So we're going to go through the questions. I'm just trying to pull the, the, the Q&A. There it is down. And what I'll actually do is have this up in the background because that probably has more information than the Q&A slide, slide there. All right. 
<laughs> all right, Felice, thanks. Felice goes, all right, Rachel, tomorrow, remember when she first came on board? Yeah, that was, wow, that was about a little over eight years ago, eight and a half years ago at this point. Um, what is the minimum TEAK investment? Really great question. So uh, in addition to the real estate that we have at Grand Pacifica, we have the home lots, we have uh, the homes, the single family homes, we do have TEAK. And this may seem a little bit uh, different. This is a little different than what we have traditionally, but we have an extensive amount of land there at Grand Pacific. And it previously, the property was previously a cattle pasture. Um, over time, we, we've been developing it. But what I wanted, I'm going to get to your answer here, Felice. Um, the minimum investment is $6,880 $6, for a uh, a parcel is almost one years old at this point. Actually in October, it'll be one year old. Teak is a 25 year harvest cycle. There are thinning payouts throughout. So at age 12, 18 and 20, you receive payouts from the thinnings and then the big harvest at age 25. If you're looking for an investment, entry level investment, I'd say that is the way to go. If you're looking for an investment for residency, uh, we can certainly put together a package for you where the minimum is $30,000. Uh, so you're able to apply for that investor residency. And then in addition to that, I would also recommend the Casita Village lot there. Um, that one is a, a great one to hold on to. If you want at some point to build a house there, you can. Um, but I think that those would be two really great, really great options. Mark, yes, we do have financing available. Uh, it depends entirely on the property. Uh, for the, the, the Nicaragua Teak, we do have, um, it depends how much you decide to own, but you can put $5,000 down and then the re remaining balance paid in equal installments up to six months at 0% interest. Uh, Casita Village, what we're doing with this special here is $5,000 down, the balance paid over 72 months at 0% interest. So that monthly payment comes out to $375. If you're looking at the site map and you'd rather swap that lot for one that's a little different, we can certainly work with you there um, as well. Um, Kent will have to get back to us with Playa Pacifica. I'm not entirely sure about what the financing looks like there. Um, Las Perlas, the one that's under construction right now, we do have 50% financing available, 5-0%. And the terms there, it is 6.9% interest, 30-year amortization, and a three-year balloon. We can work on those numbers for you. Um, and I do want to point out that that interest rate isn't, you know, so great, especially in the states where you're getting 2-3%, maybe 4%. That's good. It's definitely good for the region. Typically, you find banks or developers are offering financed properties for 10, 11, 12 percent, um, but it does give you an option. And what I would recommend is just paying down the loan as you go. And then Las Perlas Rivas, there is financing available there. The, the, the seller is flexible, I'd say up to 50 percent, um, but the, develop, the, the seller there is, is um, giving you some leeway. Oh, and then he also wanted me to mention is that if you are looking at it from the cash perspective, there is the cash discount of about $125,000 plus closing costs. Um, in, in Nicaragua, closing costs are about 3%, so really affordable um, and just something to bear in mind as you're, you're looking at prices. But that 129.9 or 124.9 for Rivas, that does include the furniture that's there. So it'll be ready for the rental program. Um, one question that I get quite a bit is about Las Perlas 212, the one that's under construction, that first floor corner unit. Uh, we're looking for that to be done end of end of this year, early next in time for high season. So as I said, high season is about November to May. Uh, that's typically when you're, you're getting a bulk of your rental income, like we said, because the weather is great down there at that time. It's a beautiful part of the year. Uh, surfers tend to come a little bit later because that's when surf season is. Um, but it is a great opportunity. And I think for people who are looking to serve this increased rental market, that that's coming, it is, is worth a consideration. It's, it's a beautiful condo, it's in a really great location, and you can you can watch the surfers or watch the sunset, whatever whatever it is that you choose. I see Edward here says, thank you, HCNM may like to attend some of these. Absolutely, feel, feel free to invite whoever it is that you would like to invite. Uh, we'd love to have as many folks on here as possible. And what I'll recommend to everybody is if you haven't had the chance yet to listen to the Nicaragua 101 presentation that Patrick uh, did last week. Definitely recommend it. He talks about Nicaragua from his experience from being there uh, for a long time and it is it is definitely worth it. And I think you'll you'll see that there truly is a tremendous amount of opportunity in the country right now. And I, I would recommend everybody look at, at different opportunities, come down. I think that planes start flying again to 
uh, to Nicaragua in September. The borders never really closed, but planes stopped flying. I know that you can charter a private plane and go down if you would like. You're able to do that. But if uh, <laughs> if you're like me and you're waiting or relying on United or American or Delta, uh, they don't start again until until September. Something may change in the meantime, but uh, definitely get it on your docket to to go down and visit. And with that, I would like to thank everybody for being here. Thank you so much. I hope that this piqued your interest a little bit and we look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.